Okay, we're back with the new set of challenges. Um, when I look at them, or when I think about them, I'm thinking this is, in effect, a conversation around the employee comfort. Um, everyone loves to feel um, welcomed, included, and heard. Why do we even consider this a challenge? It sounds such a basic. Uh, what's your perspective on that? Well, I think um, all of the topics are can be challenging. You know, starting from onboarding. You know, people come to the organization, and uh, I think all of the organizations are planning onboarding, and they're planning the time for people to get to know the organization, get to know their teams, they get to know the role. But then, very often, the life comes in, and you want the employee to work 100%, you know, fully from the day one. Mm. I hope it's not happening very often, but you know, uh, we, we are pushing to be effective uh, and efficient very quickly. So I, I completely understand and agree this can be a challenge. And I know examples from our organizations, but many organizations are trying to, and really not, not only trying, but really working with this topic, uh, making it... Uh, uh, more friendly and really giving time employees. But I, I can imagine still uh, this, this can be a challenge. Uh, the other topics as well, you know, inclusive language. Uh, I think this is, we are learning a lot about that still. Uh, we are so used to, our brains are so used to, you know, to our habits and the way, the way we talk. And something what for me might seem normal for others might not. And getting space for people. I talk a lot, so you know I have to consciously think, you know, when I'm with my team, not to overtake the whole space of the training, so uh, meeting. So it's from the little things, but also on the everyday meetings, on the coffee in the kitchen. So I think, you know, it, it, I see those challenges everywhere. So I'm, I'm very happy we are going to talk about that and see some presentations on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I would f fully agree, as you said. Uh, this onboarding process is ultra important to make it uh, equitable for all new new joiners. From the beginning, like, who is your buddy? Like, how have you been introduced into the company? Mm -hmm. uh, to actually, uh, a simple thing when it comes to inclusive language, like, how would you like to be called? Uh, it's uh, In Poland, our names have very various forms yeah and it's not nicknames it's just different forms of our names mm -hmm. uh, i would say official so it's really uh, a simple thing as that to do uh, uh, around how you, how everyone in the team would like to be called this is uh, one thing and the second thing is about um, what we mentioned before about these do's and don'ts. Yeah, uh, uh, when I uh, cooperate with teams, and uh, they always say that it's ultra important. When there is a new joiner, we need to tell them what is our contract here, psychological contract, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. And then I'm asking them uh, a question like, uh, yeah, but this is your contract and not a new joiner person uh, and not a new joiner contract. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, to what extent are you eager to implement to include this per uh, this new person perspective mm -hmm. into these uh, agreements rules, however however you call it in your team? Mm -hmm. you know? Shimon, I think that's obvious. That is your turn now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I remember when I joined um, uh, a, an organization, it was um, a couple of years ago, and uh, there was an introduction, so there was uh, this introductory uh, day to the company, and I remember that there was a presentation about diversity, equity, inclusion, and I was like impressed, wow, like something, something like um, this is, is mentioned even. And then, then there was even some, there were some uh, initiatives around the LGBTQ plus community, I was like really surprised. Uh, when was it, Shimon? It was, uh, it was a senior manager uh, uh, talking, about, uh, uh, talking about various initiatives. So for example, rainbow lanyards, like now they are standard, but mm. back uh, a, a couple of years ago, it was like really something that was uh, uh, there for the very first time. So I was like really impressed. So I think the very first day is important that we talk about uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. But then uh, what also comes to my mind is uh, a phenomenon called uh, social learning, 
Albert Bandura, he was a famous Canadian, Canadian American psychologist, and his father actually was born in Krakow, so mm. that's also interesting, but it's another story. So social learning, he coined this term, and what actually he meant is that people observe what, what other people do, so what leaders do. Mm -hmm. uh, people imitate, so imitate language, imitate behaviors, imitate what is permitted, what is not permitted. And we model, we model sometimes, if, you, if we are parents, we model behaviors, but also we model behaviors of people around us. So I think that's super important, that social learning. So what we do, no matter if we are leaders, managers, like employees, uh, it, it matters because people do observe imitate and we model behaviors and inclusive behaviors as well. Mm -hmm. If I may add, because uh, you were talking about, in, you know, teaching people and setting a contract with a new joiner, I think also that in the ideal world, the culture should be one and this should be the visible culture and, but in reality, we have the visible culture, we have what, uh, you know, all the things we say, some things we do, and then you have a lot of stuff which is, you know, going kind of behind. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, even if I would like to have only one thing or one setup of the organization and our uh, organizational culture, I think it's also important when somebody new joins the organization to look at those things which sometimes are not said or the, 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 those subtle, uh, subtle things which are happening in the organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love, as I said, you know, to, to get rid of those and be open and talk openly and see everything what's happening in the organization from day one. But I know, you know, even if we try a lot, still there are things like that. So sometimes, you know, people get, they hear something and then they get a bit confused. So I think, you know, this also is important to, to tackle this because we want to, set, uh, to build the culture in the right way. And we don't want to go behind the curtain. But it's, you know, if it's, uh, we have those little things, I think it's important that the person is not and doesn't feel lost in the organization. So we can, we can do different things and we can improve the uh, culture and we want to go in the right direction. But mm -hmm. if there is something still not working, let's also talk about that, that we, you know, we work on something, but it's still this or that. It will be easier for people to kind of mm -hmm. get into the um, speed of settling up and, and connecting with different people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eva, I, I was moved uh, the, uh, with what you said about this, um, yeah, being ready to say that not everything is working as we would like <laughs> this to, to work. And it reminded me of a, stro a story of my colleague, actually, because she started working in one of the company and uh, she encountered uh, misbehavior from uh, another colleague. And uh, she asked me what, sh what sh should she do? And I said, okay, just uh, let others know, let your leader know. And she said, no, uh, because no one will believe me because I am a new joiner now. Okay. And it was really, uh, um, uh, you know, really shocking for me, but it's about creating a safe space for this new joiner to clarify actually what is okay, what is not okay, and to have this safe space to, mm. um, to, to address these mm -hmm. behaviors, yeah. Mm -hmm. Statistically, things happen in the organization, you know, you have a lot of people in different organizations, so, and it doesn't have to be a conscious and, you know, something done, uh, you know, that people want to do it, you know, sometimes things happen and, and uh, you know, I can point out to myself and many behaviors which I wish I didn't do or didn't say, and I didn't do it on purpose to hurt someone, but it's, you know, it, it happens. So mm. I think it's, you know, to be really aware and building the safe space that people can talk and they can address from the very first day. And so they know who to talk, where to turn when, uh, when you have a difficult situation.